want to find out what's going on in your community, El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the training and skills you need to get a new career? Call Center for Training and Careers today. That's CTC at 408-213-0961 and start building your new career today. Good evening, I'm Siwapili Rose Amador Lebeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Today we have with us Donna Seaton. Welcome, Donna. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure. We finally got you on, huh? I know. It took forever, <laughs> but I'm here. Well, why don't you tell us where you're from? I am originally from kind of like everywhere but Nevada. Mm -hmm. Grew up in Stewart, Nevada. Okay. And. Uh, eventually moved over to Auburn, California when I was a young teenager. Went away to boarding school, grew up in Southern California. Oh, okay. And graduated from there and moved on. And you're a Washoe? I'm Washoe. Washoe, okay. And you work for the Native TANF program? Yes. I'm in Oakland. In Oakland, I'm an administrative too to the director. So you've been very busy these last few years, huh? Mm -hmm. Been there since the beginning. What I find fascinating is I understand you help deliver babies. You're a coach. Yes. Tell I'm us about coach. that. I find oh. that fascinating. I've been a labor coach now going on 36 years. Wow. And I got into it when my youngest sister was pregnant and she didn't have anybody with her. And so she went into labor uh -huh. and I went with her to the hospital and that was in Carson City. She had a very, very beautiful delivery, very uneventful, but she was uh -huh. a good patient. She was very good. And I was with her, and, and I did what I needed to do, and it just came to me just natural. Mm -hmm. Pressure to the back, help her with you know whatever we needed, got up, walked with her, made sure she drank a lot. Uh -huh. And when I was done and she had my nephew, the doctor wanted to know where did I learn to do all this. And I went, what did I to learn to do what? And he said, well, you were extremely helpful. You know, Did you get training somewhere? And I didn't know what he was talking about. Uh -huh. Little did I know that what I was doing was called labor coaching. So that's how I got into it. And uh, so how old is the uh, the oldest baby you've... 36. 36? He just turned 36 on Thanksgiving. Oh my goodness. And so how often do you do it? Now I've cut back quite a bit. But uh, in the very beginning, once I relocated and came to California, I ended up uh, with my sister again, the same one, mm -hmm. with her second child. And we were at a county hospital in Oakland called Highland. And I went in there and they had a, a labor coaching room and it was set up like a, like a, a bedroom, mm -hmm. you know, double bed and it was very comfortable. Very com and she had a midwife and uh, I was with her through the whole thing again, walking with her, helping her, um, back pressures, doing all the things that I knew I should mm -hmm. be doing to help her. And when I was all done with this child, the, la the, the midwife, her name was Yeshi. She said, where did you go get training? I want to <laughs> know where you were. I said, I, you're the second one that told me that. I said, I've never, I've never gotten any training. She goes, well, you're in for a surprise. She says, we're having labor coaching training here. She says, in two weeks, and I want to sign you up. I went, okay, what is that? She said, you come to it and find out. And that's how I got involved with the Alameda County Labor Coaching Association. Wow. And we had to, at that time, once we were done, I think we had to do 25 births. And I did that in a week. In a week? In a week. <laughs> oh, my goodness. In a week. Yeah, so it's been going. And did they just call you in when someone's about to deliver, or do when, you meet these people beforehand? Well, or at, that time, at that time during training, they, we were given an option if we uh -huh. wanted our, our phone to be on call, and I put my number on there for on call. So, and fortunate for me, I lived across the street. So 
from the hospital. Oh. So I was gonna, so I <laughs> you was were in like, demand. <laughs> yes, I was going to get my certificate one way or the other. Wow. And, and, you know, and I had a really, really wonderful neighbor, and she watched my two little kids for me. If it was 2 o'clock in the morning, I had to go and help. Oh, my goodness. So, so d did you find that there were a lot of um, women that didn't have someone to assist them, oh. or they just, or they didn't? Lots and lots of women, for whatever the reason. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody was supposed to be with them and they got sick or somebody oh. was supposed to and they couldn't get there and uh -huh. you know so yeah there's a lot of need and, and a lot of our mothers believe it or not don't know what to do they've never had a trial before they've sure been, you know they sure. don't have any idea of what's going to be happening so I'm the one that ha that helps them so and I, I would assume that a lot of women don't even know there's such a thing as a labor coach, uh, other than, uh, than somebody they know. Yeah, because when we first started out, it was a program that we started, and um, it was all word of mouth. You know, do you mm -hmm. want a labor coach? And I said, well, what's a labor coach? Why, why would I need one? You know, and, mm -hmm. and some women come in, and they have no problems, no complications, and the baby becomes really good. Other women, of course, have very, very long labors. You could go into 36 hours of labor. It's a long, very long. And you would stay there that stay whole there time, the whole huh? time, from beginning, middle to end. Wow. And even follow up afterwards. And you still do it? Yes. And so how, is, how do you do that and balance your work schedule? Try to have them have their babies on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so you schedule that or they schedule that? Yeah. But don't <laughs> or the middle of the night? Or <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't do it as much as I'd like uh -huh. to. I mean, I think between now and the end of December, I only have three that are going to be on their way. But in the spring, I think I might have four, but I don't do it as much as I'd like to. And how many have you delivered? Oh, I couldn't, even, I couldn't even begin to tell you. It's just too many, 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 many. Wow. And all beautiful experiences, of course. Uh -huh. And of course, some that are emergency cesarean sections for uh -huh. whatever the reason a baby gets stuck or, mm -hmm. you know, they just don't want to cooperate and wants to get out now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but yeah. Wow. Yep. Now, do you have a lot of Native women that go through Lots. this? Lots of Native women. Of course, like I said, it's word of mouth. Uh -huh. Somebody knows. I had a young lady who had, uh, excuse me, um, six kids. She had six. I was there for every one of them. Then you were there for every every single one wow. of the babies. <laughs> now and then, her daughter was pregnant, and asked me to be there. So then we had the grandma, we had the mother, and we Thank had her. Goodness, so, generations. Generations. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, so it's word of mouth. You got to call her. She's the one to call. She's the one that'll be there with you. You know, and it's a lot too. If you meet a meet a client uh, or a patient by word of mouth, and you follow them through their pregnancy, uh -huh. you know, kind of like, are you going to your doctor's? So you're getting your exercise. You're getting enough water. You know, you're getting enough sleep. You're, and then at the time that you, you know, signs to look for when you're going to have your baby. Of course, mm -hmm. we have a lot of false labors. That's okay too. You know, baby will get in mm -hmm. there. Baby's good and ready. Um, so is this something, I would assume that people, there's a need for more of these women that actually help um, deliver or coach. Yeah. Um, but is there enough information out there about it? Because I never heard of that, I mean, you know, other than, <laughs> you know, you said I, I really don't birthing. know because like I said, originally when we started out, it was Alameda County Labor Association, uh -huh. Labor Coaching Association, and then of course we found out and then word of mouth through labor coach, um, mm -hmm. coaches that know each other, and then of course with midwives and, and doctors that know of you. you so know. if there's women out there that want to get into assisting other women with their deliveries, where would they hear about it or how would they get involved? Probably at their clinic, if there's a clinic by, and go into the OBGYN department and uh -huh. let them know that you're interested or that you are. And they give classes? Yes, definitely, huh. definitely. Or they could plug you into where you can go get trained. Well, it sounds like you were a natural. I, yeah, that's a, everybody, <laughs> keeps, well, you know what you're doing. I said, it's just, that it's because I was there and I had a child on my own and nobody told me uh. anything. I didn't have a difficult time. I had three, ki I have three mm -hmm. kids and I was very fortunate, all three of mine, mm -hmm. to have a very, very easy, fast delivery. So, um, but I've, I've seen many women suffer. You know, mm -hmm. if they don't have anybody that could be there to help them, then uh -huh. it's, it's very, to be alone and, and not know. So I, I try to be there and, and be a support person to them. Oh, that's really commendable. It's, it's important. Yeah. <laughs> Bring all these beautiful babies into the world in a good way. Do you keep pictures of them, some of them? I try. Do they send you pictures? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Believe me, I still get Christmas cards. Aw, yeah, some, some of these kids are, 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 I had a 
one young lady, I'll never forget her. She, um, I was there when she was born, and I've always kept in touch with her mom and everything, and her husband was relocated and went to Vegas, and she was pregnant. So they sent me a plane ticket, and I went to Las oh Vegas God. when she had a baby, because she wasn't wow. going to have it And he was um, in Atlanta, I think he had to go to business, and she mm -hmm. went into labor. Sent me a plane ticket, said, please be here, because I can't be alone. So Aww. I was there when she had her little boy. <laughs> How nice. So. How nice. And at the, at the Native TANF program, what do you do there? Oh, I'm an administrative assistant, too. Okay. So i um, been there seven years now. Yeah. And what are the highlights of working there? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I got a really, uh, the people that we work with are just, just wonderful. Everybody's committed to what they do, and it's dealing with Native families, you know, in crises mm -hmm. and um, helping families um, overcome barriers, help them employ, help them get jobs, you know, help them go to school. You know. Now, you work out of the Oakland office, mm -hmm. and I know there's one in San Jose, and there's, uh, what? San Francisco. Uh, in San Francisco, and Stockton. And, and we okay. have a satellite in Santa Cruz. So more Northern California then? Yeah, we also have one in Nevada City. Oh, okay. And your headquarters is in Nevada? Gardnerville, Nevada, yeah. Okay, because I've, I've, I know a lot of the different things you do in San Jose, but I'm not really familiar with the entire program and the scope of the program in California. Mm -hmm. So, well, thank you for being here. Thank oh, you for all the wonderful you work me. you do. I'll it's keep on doing it it's I so commendable, it and maybe some other women will hear your story and <laughs> follow your, in your footsteps because I'm sure you know there's a need for oh, there's a big need for big women need. to uh, be out there and helping. Yep, got to help each other. That's right. Well, thank you, Donna, for being here, You're and welcome. we'll be right back. You're watching Native Voice TV, and our next guest is Esther Stouffer. Welcome, Esther. Well, and I thank you. And tell me what tribe you're from and how you say your name in your language. My Yupik name is Achuk. My name is Esther Stauffer. I am from Chipornik. And uh, my parents were David and Josephine Lewis. And my grandmother's name was Ahuhak. And ah. that's my traditional way of introducing myself. Um, the reason we do that is so that when you're in another village, mm -hmm. everyone will know where you came from and which grandmother you had. And so. And where is that, your Ch village? Chifornik is on the southwest coast of Alaska. So if you see the Alaska map, mm -hmm. my village is over on this side. So it's all the way on the coast. Ah, yeah. okay. So is it cold there? <laughs> <laughs> is that an understatement? <laughs> definitely. <laughs> it is definitely cold. Uh, during the winter, there's no trees there. So during the winter, it's all white. And uh, without the trees, there's always some wind, wind chill. And the coldest it we've seen before has dipped down to 60 below. <gasps> oh my goodness, yeah. that is cold. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So imagine walking out on the tundra and it's all white. And you're going from your village to the next village uh -huh. on the snow machine. And it's a clear day and all of a sudden the wind picks up. And so now you've got a blizzard and you can't see anything. And so while you're traveling, my father used to tell me that you keep an eye out for the northern star. And so that's how you're able to locate yourself and find your way home. Oh my goodness. Now, can you see the road? Uh, there are no roads. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the only way that you can go into the village is by airplane uh -huh. during the summer or in the winter as well. And then during the summer, we usually travel by Lund, which is a small 18-foot Lund. It's smaller than a fishing boat, and that's how we're able to go on the river and out to the ocean to collect um, fish and some other subsistence activities. And then during the winter, we utilize a snow machine, or when I was growing up, mm -hmm. my father had a dog sled too. So he had about 12 dogs, and we would always pitch in to 
feed the dogs and take care of them. And I did write in one before. So How was that? <laughs> it, it was actually scary at first, but once you got used to writing in the sled, it got a lot better. And there was a funny story. My mom once told me that uh, the way that she got married when she was younger, she used to live in a sod home. And a long, um, long time ago, they used to have arranged marriages. Uh -huh. And so my father had, uh, and my father's mother and my mother's father had arranged the marriage. And so when the time came, my father went to my mother's house with some gifts. You know, they had to bring gifts for mm -hmm. the wife to be in their family. So he brought some seals and some fur. And they were all in the dog sled. And really? so my mother was sitting down uh, making a fur hat. So, and she noticed a man come in and, you know, so the parents took him to the bedroom and they talked for a while and, and then he went back outside and he got all the uh, gifts for them, brought them into the house, got them all the fur. And then my mother's, my mother's mother told her that she had to get her belongings. So she got what she had and all her clothes and, and she told her that this is now your husband. Oh, wow. So she got all her belongings. He took her belongings onto the sled and um, she went in there and he covered her up nicely. And so w once she was in the sled, they left on the sled team. And the on their way to their new home, there was a priest that had arrived into the village. And so he stopped at the priest and got officially married because without that marriage certificate, they couldn't get recognized as American citizens. Really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So um, that after they got their you know marriage ceremony done, they went to their new sod home. So that's how she got married. So it was arranged, so neither one had mm -hmm. seen each other before? Did they know of each other? Uh, no, they hadn't known each other before that. Wow. So yeah, and that was a tradition that they had a long time ago. So she went off with the dog sled. So how many yes. dogs are on there? About 12. Really? Yeah, and they're very lean and very fast. And the dog team also saved my father's life. And, and in the village in where I grew up, there, like I said, there's no trees. And so in, during the winter, there's a lot of snow. So mm -hmm. uh, when the wind picks up, there's a big blizzard and you can't see, you know, if you put your hand in front of your face, you can't see it. So my dad was out traveling and hunting and uh, he got caught in that storm. Now, one of the things that they tell us when we're growing up is uh, if you're caught in a storm and you get cold, there will be a beautiful woman that appears in front of you. And uh, very beautiful that she will give you gifts like a hat or a coat, very beautiful. And our tradition is that um, you do not accept that. Otherwise, they, um, when, when they're out in the cold, you're gonna take your coat off to get accept her gift. Mm -hmm. And when my father came home, uh, he told us that wh while he was on the dog sled team, he took a rope on, on the dog sled and tied his hands, both hands, to the dog sled. And while he was going, this woman appeared and offered him a very nice coat, and he declined and the dog team took him home because they knew, the dog team knew where to go. So when he got to the house, he came inside and when he showed up, he had icicles down his eyes oh my and down goodness. his eyebrows. And he was close to hypothermic. And so my, my mom took care of him and she told us to go pray at the church, so mm -hmm. we did. And that's how the dog team he saved brought him his, home? Yeah, saved his life. Wow. So when you're in Alaska and you get stuck in the storm and the beautiful woman appears, do not accept her gift. Because if you do, you're gonna take your jacket off 
And that's why you see sometimes when they find uh, individuals that uh, got lost and they, they die of hypothermia, some mm -hmm. of their clothing mm -hmm. items are off. Oh, yeah. interesting. Now, are you wearing a traditional uh, clothing? This is called a qasbuk, and so we use it for native dancing. Uh -huh. And you can also use it for daily wear. Very and pretty. Women have the rough like this, uh -huh. and the men are, they don't have the rough part. But men can also have these. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. Now, you are Deputy Director of the Native TANF Program mm -hmm. for Northern California? I am the Deputy Director for the Bay Area. Bay Area. And what that means is I oversee four sites in the Bay Area. Stockton is one place, mm -hmm. San Jose, uh, San Francisco, Oakland. Those are the four places that I, I oversee. And we have about, I would say, 30 plus staff with mm. the four sites. And what is the main mission of the Native TANF program? The main mission is to uh, provide services, cash assistance, education, career advancement for the American Indian Alaska Natives that are tribally recognized or California Indians that are on the California roll. And our main objective is to provide those services so they can become self-sufficient. Oh, and okay. that is one of the things that we really look at providing is services that will empower them so that they can um, help themselves to that career that they choose. Mm -hmm. And to in, in, in the end, they will become self-sustaining. And you have a heavy emphasis on education, right, right. for youth? Yes. Um, we do have various areas that we look at. If an individual has multiple barriers, for example, if they need help with substance abuse mm -hmm. or, you know, alcohol abuse, then we do have areas where we provide, uh, we can refer them to. And we've got a huge network within Alameda that we can uh, refer those clients to so that they can help themselves. So how many clients would you say in what, the seven, eight years that the, um, the Washer Tribe has run the program mm -hmm. um, have you serviced? I would say up to 500. And that's, okay. um, that's the highest number that I've seen, mm -hmm. uh, are 500 Al Alaska Native or American Indian families. And, and what, what are the goals, ultimate goals um, of the, the program to self-sufficiency? Yes. For what? For the, um, the whole family, uh, the family unit as a whole. So if a child, say for example, there's a child that needs tutoring and they're in either elementary, middle or high school, then uh, we provide that service for the family so that the child can um, bring up their grades and succeed in school. The other thing that we look at is providing the vocational education training for mm -hmm. the mother or the father. And so okay. if somebody's interested in, say, we had a client that was interested in becoming a dental hygienist, and she did receive that certificate, and she passed her state certification. And so oh, now nice. today she's a dental hygienist. Oh, so you have a lot of success stories yes. and role models. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, you do some very good work, I know, in our community here in San Jose, but there, in all the other communities that you serve, and since we're kind of broadcast mm -hmm. in a yes. lot of locations, um, there may be a program close to some of our viewers that they can access services through the Native TANF program. Right. Well, thank you for being here, Esther, and thank you for all the work you do. You have some fascinating stories anxious to hear more. Thank you for joining us on Native Voice TV. We'll see you again next week. Good night.